Hey everyone, Edge here with uh, the ViewSonic G-Tab. Um, I've had a couple more requests, so I thought I'd uh, get straight to it. Uh, I had a request here to look at Kindle or some other type of uh, ebook. So uh, we'll do that. We're going to go ahead and look up a, open up a book that I'm reading right now. Um, I actually just reinstalled this app uh, onto my G-Tab since I've been wiping it and reinstalling it so many times. I had to deregister all those other installs because I kept forgetting to deregister them every time I wiped out the other systems and Amazon lets you have I think uh, seven or eight devices uh, registered to share Kindle content with and I of course bumped up against the upper limit of that so anyway as you can see here it's uh, plain, plain text uh, to go pages left and right um, you can change the way the text looks you have view options you can change the font size as you can see, it's right away. Make it smaller, bigger, however you want. You can it's white and black. You can make it sepia, or you can make it black on white. Um, you can change the brightness of how bright the uh, the uh, screen is for just this app, which is pretty cool. So, anyway, there's um, that part, and then of course, uh, a lot of people I think would let me unplug it here. A lot of people will probably like to read in this mode let's back up a bit so you know there it's a little bit more kind of like a like a regular book I guess um, when I read this is how I read with it in the um, uh, portrait mode I think they call this and it's pretty easy to read I don't know how how it'll uh, focus in but it's pretty clear and it's uh, really easy to read the rotation is obviously on the G tab pretty good, so it rotates pretty quickly. Uh, finding books on here is pretty sound, pretty simple. Um, you want to look for a book, you can go to the Kindle store. Um, it goes to your browser. Let's give it a couple seconds here to get to it, I guess. And then you know, just uh, just like you normally would on Amazon, just go and look at uh, the content there. You pick one, and then uh, it it basically sends it over here to the Kindle app. Um, I have a lot of books, so I can even add. I'll show you how quick it is to add a book here. We'll add uh, the Adventures of Huck Finn. This is downloading, and there it is. It's already done. So now I've got three books in here. Now to get rid of it, if I don't want it on here, just keep it pressed down, remove from device, and there it is, it's gone. So that's kind of an overview of the Kindle. Uh, next, next question I had was uh, about typing on here. And so let's go to uh, Evernote. All right, so let's make a new note. So, can you actually hold this down and type with uh, eight fingers? Yeah, you kind of can. Um, I've done it before. Um, we'll just call this one test. Now, this is a very, very strange angle for me, so I don't know how good this is going to be. Say, so, you go now is the... Oops, see, I'm already making typos because of this weird angle. The time for all great oops, men to come. Yeah, see, it's at this weird angle, it's really hard for me to type. But um, let's see if I could do this a little differently here. All right, I don't know how well you could see this here. I'm hoping it's, uh, it's at least something. All right, so come to the aid of their... Yeah, see, I'm, I'm pulling, pulling up all kinds of typos here. Come to the aid of their country. Whoops. Oh, you went T-R-Y-M-E-N. 
So I mean, you know, you can you can type on this thing. Um, is it as good as a netbook? I uh, no, it's not. It's not as easy because there's nothing for you to rest your fingers on, so your fingers know exactly where they need to go. But um, you know, for you know, whoops, that's the number button. For just some easy note taking, it's pretty okay for that. The quick brown fox jumped over the. I forget what the quick brown fox jumped over, but anyway, um, it's probably not the most ideal of uh, of setups for lots and lots of of um, text input. I, as a writer, would hate to have to write a book <laughs> on this thing. I think that would be pretty hard to do. Um, Writing emails, writing uh, messages to people, uh, typing for regular type stuff, that's all pretty easy and it works really well. I've typed some pretty lengthy email messages on here without any problems, but um, for some really hardcore, like, you know, write a couple chapters, there, that would drive me nuts and I'd really have to use my, uh, my netbook for that. So, uh, next question I had was, what was the name of the widgets I'm using? So, the widgets I'm using are, and I will show you, the calendar widget. I'm just using a 2x2 two two that comes up on the left. Now, I notice it's a little bit longer there. That's because you can click on it and drag it down a bit. Make it as long as you want. But uh, I like it about there. Um, the other widget I'm using is called uh, Fancy Widgets, I believe. Yeah. And fancy widget is what gives me the uh, the clock, the temperature, um, and it's going to show a moon or a sun depending on what's going on out there. Clear the temperature, high and low, and the date. Now, notice there's no background on it right now. Um, I can go into the settings to fa of fancy widget, look at appearance settings, and it says hide widget background. I can unhide it, and now when we go back, there it is. So now it's got the outline around there. Um, I think that's the only real widgets I have on here. I was using a third one before, and that one is, if I'm not mistaken, Power Amp, and it's the Power Amp with album art that I was using, and it's a it's a pretty neat uh, widget because it allows you to go into here, and uh, there you go. And now, and now I've got uh, music going. I can pause it from here if I want to. I can play it, go to the next song forward, pause it, play, go forward, and just keep going until I get a song I want to hear. Pause it again. So, you know, um, like I said, those are the three that I had going before on my main screen. Now I'm really just using two. Um, I also used to have, for those of you who remember uh, back to some of my earlier videos, I did have the analog clock going on as, as well. I typically had that over here in this corner. Uh, right now there's no room because of the size of these. Let's see if I can bring this one down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So I could put this up there. It's kind of redundant now to have the time and the time and the time right above it. Three different versions of the time all right there within about four inches of each other. But hey, you know, uh, one of the beauties of Android is that you can do all the widgets you want to and you can um, do whatever you want with your screens because uh, you've got five of them so and obviously when it comes to uh, the, the icons there at the bottom those are just apps I use a lot um, the ones I use the most uh, here's a new one I found by the way it's called Color Clock um, it's actually really nice looking there's supposed to be some weather here and for I'm going to be emailing the guy who writes this and asking him if he can maybe add the ability to hard code your location because what this is looking for is it's looking for GPS to locate itself so that it can display where you're from right around up here and it'll change the clouds and the sky to you know whatever your weather conditions are locally. But the look on this, I, I, I'm all about this look. This is beautiful to me. And... Um, 
there's a lot of different options for alarms and um, there's even an option that um, let's set it up right now that if you t uh, here it is speak time on long touch so watch this huh well it's not doing it so what, what's supposed to happen I'm sorry about that but what's supposed to happen is um, when you touch the screen it's supposed to basically give you the time it's supposed to speak it out for you but anyway color clock it's new I think uh, from what I read um, it's in the uh, marketplace you can download it there it's free and it's beautiful um, it's a great screen to to have on your tablet when you're leaving it sitting in a in a plate holder like I've got or what other what other stand you're using whatever kind of stand you're using it I think it looks really sharp Anyway, um, I'm going to keep this video at under 12 minutes. Uh, I will definitely be making more. I'm going to be going through the comments that people have been sending me and uh, trying to find more things to answer and to, uh, to show you guys here. I'm a very fervent believer in, in that this is a great device and uh, I really think it could fill the needs of, of uh, a lot of people out there who want to have an Android tablet or just a tablet in general. It's a great system once you've got these custom firmwares on here. Um, the way it comes from the store is okay at best. But when these um, devices really, really shine is when you put these custom firmwares on there. And it doesn't matter whether it's a TNT light like I'm using or whether you're using a Z-pad build or whether you're using... Um, I can't believe off the top of my head I just forgot what the other one was called. But, uh, um, oh, that's right, the clock, the Cyanogen mod. So whether you're using Cyanogen, TNT, or the Z-Pad, it's definitely the way to use these tablets. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna think I'm going to go grab my daughter's iPad and uh, do some comparisons on video. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Otherwise, um, edge out.